that was a funky baseball game. It was funky, yet the Phillies won. And I was very entertained. Let's just say, not a bad Tuesday night. The Phillies find a way to win 6-5 to five against the Atlanta Braves. When their starting pitcher, Jason Vargas, gave them three innings and threw 77 pitches. That's impressive. That's impressive that we held on to win this game, considering the fact that we don't have the strongest bullpen in the world. Whoa. Whoa. You know, it's almost as shocking as, I don't know, getting free money. <laughs> oh, here's a free $20 from me to you. Use the promo code BRODES at SeatGeek's checkout. If you already use it, it's simple. Just make another email address. It's worth the money. 6-5 to five, the Phillies won today. The first inning was electric. JT Romuto with a bomb that ends up hitting the foul post. The Phillies are up 1-0. And then... <laughs> You hang, uh, you hang a pitch to Bryce Harper? Yeah, okay, see you later. Back to back. We're up 2 nothing. Dare we go back to back to back with Reese Hoskins? Oh, so close, so close. It was this close to going back to back to back. But he gets a double. And Corey Dickerson then hits a homer to knock him in as well. I mean, come on. Three home runs in the first inning. We're up 4 nothing. Now, of course, we give up the lead. That was going to happen, all right? I knew that while we were up 4 nothing, I knew it was going to happen, and it all happened in the third. It could have been way worse, but we actually had good defense. We had one bad play there where Jason Vargas tried to flip a ball up to JT. He couldn't really get to it. It was a little low. He tried to turn two a little early as well. He didn't focus on getting the ball first. <sighs> that costed us. But we only allowed four runs in that inning. <laughs> only. But we only allowed four. So the game was tied. Thanks to Bryce Harper, who had an outfield assist. This is the most outfield assist he has had in one season since 2013. Yeah, that's right. He's been unbelievable defensively. It's so funny how that was a problem when we signed him. Oh, he's bad at defense. He's not bad at defense. He Gunned him out of third base. Gunned him out of third base. And Scott Kingery with a diving save in the outfield. Diving catch. Those two out in the outfield were huge in that inning. So we were tied 4-4. But in the bottom half of the third inning, Scott Kingery with a very odd inside the park home run because Acuna robs the homer. And as he comes back and plants his feet, the ball flies out of his glove. I, I, I'm stuck. I'm torn on what that should be. I lean towards the ball did leave his glove. Now, his argument was he had possession of it long enough. It was super close. I'll just say that. I could see it going either way. Maybe they just stayed with what they thought was right. You can't really overturn it to that degree. They just played along, really. It wasn't a big stop of the game and, oh, let me figure this out. Let me just say, hey, play on. But I can see why they wrote it in Inside the Parker and Scott Kingery was hustling his ass off, moving his feet, not stopping, running around the bases. The place was going crazy. That's how we took the lead back. And then Corey Dickerson hit his second of the night and that was in the bottom of the sixth. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm bothered because we're not going to re-sign Corey Dickerson. Just know that now. With Andrew McCutcheon, with with Adam Hazley, with Scott Kingery up in the air with wherever he's going to play. Because let's be real, he hasn't been bad at center field at all. Where's Corey Dickerson going? You also have the Jay Bruce in there. Where's Corey Dickerson going? There's going to be a team out there that's going to pay more money and have a starting gig for him every single day in left field. There's no shot he will be here next year. And it's disappointing because he's a stud. The guy is a legit stud. He's a professional hitter. I've been saying that since we got him. And I'm disgusted because he's totally going to leave. I have no faith in this upper management sticking with Corey Dickerson. And it bothers me because he is someone we need. He is someone we need. Now, you ask me, I would find a way to put Andrew McCutcheon in center field. But uh, no one wants to do that because of the injury. And... No one trusts that Corey Dickerson can play center field. See, I don't know why it's that big of a deal. If you're an outfielder, 
come on, find a way, right? I mean, find a way. He doesn't have uh, the arm strength. That's one of Corey Dickerson's biggest flaws. We'll get there when we get there. But we took the 6-4 to four lead, and, and from there, our, our bullpen from the third inning on was unreal. They allowed one earned run. That's how the score finished 6-5. to five. The bullpen allowed one earned run at that point. But they were great. Uh, from from Nick Vincent, <laughs> one inning, two strikeouts. All right. Parker, two innings, four strikeouts. Suarez only had a third of an inning, but he did his job. Hughes, one and two thirds. He had two strikeouts. And Hector Neris, bada bing, bada boom, gets it done. One inning, one K. All of these pitchers, zero walks. How impressive is that? Now, speaking of Hector Neris, he has one earned run in his last 21 and a third innings, dating back to July 21st, which is a 0.42 ERA. It doesn't seem that way. It's pretty crazy to hear those numbers, actually. But Hector Neris has had a pretty decent year. Every pitcher, every closer specifically, right, is going to have blown saves throughout the year. It's, it's how baseball works. It's part of the sport. But when you look at Hector Neris, he hasn't been atrocious this season. He's been better than I expected him to be from the jump. Remember last year? He had triple A time last year. That's how bad he was. That's how poor he was. That's how pathetic he was. This season, for the most part, he's been pretty, pretty solid for us. Tomorrow, Zach Eflin on the mound against Dallas Keuchel. How ironic we face Dallas Keuchel at Citizens Bank Park in a big-time series down the stretch because we didn't want to go out and get him because we thought that Nick Pavetta was going to be good. We thought Zach Eflin was going to be good. How ironic is that? Now, some bad news around baseball, and it affects the Phillies. Kristen Yelich is out for the season. Devastating. From a sports fan, devastating. I hate to see it. I hate to see injuries like that. Kristen Yelich is a stud. And he goes down. And Javier Baez is out for the season. The Chicago Cubs and the Milwaukee Brewers. Two teams the Phillies are fighting with for this NL wildcard spot. Along with the Mets. Along with the Diamondbacks. It's almost as if the baseball gods are trying to keep the Phillies involved in this wild card race for as long as possible until the time ends. It's like the baseball gods won't allow the Phillies to drop out of this thing. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, to be honest with you, for, for my health. But it is truly disappointing to, to see two elite stars in this league fall for the rest of the season due to injury. I hate it. I hate it. I love watching the best of the best play, and, and they are up there, without a doubt. Going back to this game, though. Max Freed on the bump. We got him good. We shook him up good. We did some damage there. The offense was clicking. Corey Dickerson with two hits, three RBIs, and those two hits, of course, home runs. Let's talk about how he's been effective against lefties, too. How about that? Corey Dickerson has been doing it all. He's been attacking the lefties as well. It's insane. The guy's nuts. He's tearing it up. What an acquisition. I mean, really, what an acquisition. Bryce, two hits as well. You know he's bringing the energy every time he's up to the plate. His 31st dinger of the year this year. As soon as he hits it, I love it. I love that cockiness when he swings the bat, especially with the hanging pitch and and a pitch that he destroys. That cockiness and the stare down where he just knows it. He's got the bandana on, the headband. I love it. I love his swag, and I love seeing him in a Phillies uniform. It doesn't even seem real at times. Like, yeah, Bryce Harper, he's on the Phillies for 13 more seasons. Hell yes. Hell yes. But you also had some of the Braves players stepping up. Freddie Freeman had three hits today. Acuna, three hits today. So those two were explosive offensively but Acuna running around the bases there you know ran into some outs JT Real Muto you know that, that that just reminds me of JT Real Muto and how powerful he is behind the plate defensively and how great he is at throwing people out stop running on JT Real Muto when will it click into people's heads when will it click into people running the bases heads 
Don't run on this guy. You will get gunned out. His pop time is unreal. His arm strength is absolutely unreal, as you saw on full display today. You might as well just stay on first. You'll put your team in a better position. It's so simple. We use analytics these days. Analytics will tell you, no, don't do it. Don't do it. The guy behind the plate has a cannon. So with that being said, I want to hear your thoughts on this 6-5 to five W. We were explosive early, hitting home runs. We gave up the lead. And inside the Parker, a Corey Dickerson second homer of the night. And the bullpen, tremendous, while Jason Vargas struggled. The bullpen was due for a good day. They'll throw us one of these once in a while. How about it? Take advantage of it. Doesn't happen every night. Take advantage of it. It happened tonight. So Zach Eflin, Dallas Keuchel, tomorrow. Let's see how it plays out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.